What's up guys? It's Tony Holiday. Today, I wanna to talk to you about humanizing your drums and making them sound more realistic in your tracks. Humanizing your drums is something that can be overlooked over time, especially if you're someone that didn't grow up playing drums like myself. I grew up playing guitar, so drums was always a bit of a foreign uh, part of music to me. But over time, I've kind of learned how to program MIDI notes to sound like drums, and then also bring them back to having kind of a human feel to them as well. Humanizing your drums is really important, and that's because you want to keep your listener interested. And when the velocities are all the same and the notes are on grid all the time, it sounds very robotic, it's boring, it's something that the listener can get bored of really, really quickly. So you want to bring back in real kind of human touch into your drums. I'm going to show you how you can do that today using different tools in Logic Pro, like the humanize function, uh, different velocities, and also using percussion loops and certain effects plugins to kind of really bring your drums to life. Let's get into the project and I'm gonna show you how to humanize your drums and make them sound more realistic in Logic Pro. Let's go. All right, now you should be able to see my project here. So I just have two separate groupings and one of them is a melody and one of them is a drums grouping. You can see on these drop downs here, if I click both of those, you can see all of the tracks I've added here. And it's just a simple four bar loop but these drums are actually very simple. I just programmed these in. They're all the same velocity. They're all quantized to a 16th note. And I'm gonna show you how to take this and make it kind of have a little more of a human feel. That way our listeners won't get bored when they're listening to our tracks. Let's take a listen to both of these together and then I'll play the drum loop and you can see kind of how boring it is or how you get sick of it really quickly. So the drum loop works, but there is something about it that isn't quite, I don't know, ear catching, I guess. When the drums play with the melody, you can get away with it a little bit. But now I'm going to play these drums just dry and you can see what I mean by it gets kind of boring after a while. Let's start working on how to get these drums sounding more human. And if you can see, if I do this drop down here, it's a drums, a DMD. And I actually made this in the sequencer and then I just exchanged it to MIDI here. I haven't separated them by note pitch yet. However, I don't really like to do that at this stage. I'll usually do it in this one grouping. There's the 808 here, that's the separate one. And then this one here is the rest of the drums. So let's get into that MIDI region and we can take a look here to what we wanna change up. I would say that the biggest factor of this is the hi-hats, it's the most consistent. And it's also the one where humans are used to hearing um, differentiation for. For example, when you hit a downbeat on a hi-hat, it's usually pretty hard. And then an upbeat is a little softer. And that's what gives it the kind of sound to it, which allows your ears to kind of catch rhythm. Now, even within that, every downbeat and upbeat is probably gonna differentiate in velocities a little bit. So let's kind of fix that first. So we'll go to hi-hat. The upbeat here, we're gonna leave as is at 100. This downbeat, we're actually gonna change down to like, I don't know, 83. So it's quite a bit of differentiation there. Do the same with the next one here, and we'll go this one up to maybe like 107. And this one will go down to like 85. Now let's delete the rest of these for now, and we'll copy this pattern across and what I'm doing for that is Command R, which is uh, repeat. And now we have all of these hi-hats across of our drum pattern there. If we go in here and we actually solo out the hi-hats, let's take a listen. So it's a little bit better, still not great. So what can we do from here? Click the hi-hats and you go functions, MIDI transform, humanize. Now this is a really great function that comes with Logic Pro in the uh, MIDI transform window here. And what this does is it's based off three different parameters here, position, velocity and length. And that's referring to each MIDI note. Now, before I went in here, I highlighted just the hi-hat. So it's just gonna affect that. And what I like to do is actually for length, I'll go to through. And what that means is that we're not gonna affect the length of the notes at all. We like the length of the notes. They're sitting right. It's just kind of where they're placed on the actual MIDI grid. Velocity, this is a very important one. So what this is gonna do is basically plus or minus random means that it's going to affect the MIDI notes in a range of 10 here. So a range of 10 velocity 
the notes are gonna now be randomized in their velocity. We already went ahead and did those four notes um, kind of the way we wanted with one, the downbeat being a little harder, the other one being a little softer. And we variated the velocities of each um, down and upbeat based on those first four notes. But we wanna do it a little more. Let's start with 10 and see what happens. Um, basically 10 velocity is going to be hard to tell right off the bat, but as a cohesive kind of mix of the hi-hats, I think that should be a good number. Position, this is gonna to refer to the position of the notes on the grid. And this is the same thing, plus or minus random. And we're going to do 10 down in this area. We can actually maybe even move that up a little more. Let's do 15 for that. And that's gonna move the position of each note randomly so that it's not right on every 16th note or every piece of the grid. Once we have that, those are the only two that we want to affect. We don't want to touch status, channel, pitch, length, or sub position. And you can see back here in the MIDI window that I have the hi-hat selected. So now we can go operate only. Don't do select and operate. That'll select all of the MIDI notes in that MIDI window. You just want to do operate only to the ones that are selected. And now we'll go operate only. You can now see that some of these are a little harder than the other ones. Let's do it one more time, operate only and we'll close this MIDI transform window. Now, if you look at our hi-hats, you can see that some of these notes are a little harder, some are a little softer, but the main thing is they're all kind of variated a little better. One of the main things as well is if we zoom in on these hi-hats, you can now see that they're not completely on the grid. So if I put the playhead right at this, you can see that this note is actually a little bit behind the playhead. This one is a little bit ahead of the playhead. This one, again, a little bit ahead. This one is a little bit ahead. This one's a little bit behind and so on and so forth. And that gives it the realistic feel of someone playing it because no drummer in the world, no matter how good they are, is ever going to hit every single hi-hat right on the grid. And we don't wanna do that either. We want the human feel. We want that realistic sound as if someone is actually playing the hi-hat. So now let's take a listen to this hi-hat just soloed with the new kind of velocity and the grid. And I think I wanna turn these hi-hats up as well. When I click the hi-hats here and I move them up with the velocity like that, it'll actually move them all up the same amount, but it'll keep the variation of them. It won't fix the velocity to all the notes. If you did wanna go and do some manual velocity work in here afterwards as well, what you can do is press T, V on your uh, keyboard there. Now you can actually affect these just by dragging down or up. So let's actually fix this one back here. So this one is on a downbeat. So let's actually move it up a little bit. This one we can make a little softer. Maybe this one too will move up. This one down a bit. So that's kind of a good way how you can do hi-hats there. But what about claps, the kicks, the open hat? Group them together. So if you click clap and hold shift to do the kicks, and now you have both of those selected, we can go to functions, MIDI transform, humanize. Maybe not quite as much velocity. Let's do seven and position will do not very much as well. Let's do maybe like nine, operate only. And now you can see that they have some different velocities to them, but not too much. One thing that you need to note of as well when you're doing things that land right on the one here at the beginning of the playhead is that if you do position, sometimes the notes will move before the playhead and they won't play at the beginning. So when you zoom in here, you can see that it's done that with our kick. So what you need to do is just drag that past and then bring it back to the one there. So now that note will play when we do start the loop. This looks pretty good at this point, guys. There is some variation in the velocities. The positions have changed a little bit. Now what we can do is we can play this and see if it's a little bit better. So again, very subtle but it does sound a lot better. It's not so right on the beat. Velocities are the same. There's a little bit of human to it. It sounds better when it has some variation to it. But another one what we can do now is add some effects to the hi-hats especially to kind of again, give them some space in the stereo field. So if we go to hi-hat, we have these B31 and B32 here. Those come natively with the drum machine designer. If you click that, you can see that the bus, this one is space designer and this one is a stereo delay. Now, both those buses come on all parts of the drum machine designer, 
but I really only want to do the hi-hat for this portion. And I don't really care about the space designer too much, the reverb. Let's do the bus 32, the delay. Let's move this bus 32 all the way up to zero. And that way you can get an idea of what it sounds like with too much. And then what we'll do is we'll actually dial it back and make it a little more subtle to again, add space to the stereo field. So let's play this. That's dry with nothing. If I click bus 32 here, it almost sounds like it's in double time. And that's because the delay is making it do that. Let's actually dial this back, make it a little more subtle. I think that sounds a lot better. It kind of gives the idea that it's around us. There's mistakes being made. It sounds more human. And another one, what we can do is under audio effects, we'll go to modulation, tremolo, stereo. I've made a preset for this, which is uh, hats tremolo, but I'll show you how to make this really quick. And again, it's not gonna be the same every time, but let's turn the rate back to one half. The depth, I don't like to leave it a hundred. I like to bring it back between 30 and 50, but we'll leave it at a hundred and play this. So you can get an idea of what this sounds like. So what tremolo does, it's actually kind of ducking it and then bringing it back in. It's ducking it and bringing it back in. But if we dial it back to maybe like 30, let's do 40. So that again, it gives it the element of being a real hi-hat. That's kind of what I like to do in terms of the audio effects as well and the bussing. But now this drum loop sounds a lot more human than it did at the start. So let's play this with the melody. It just fits a lot better with it. There's a lot more movement to it, despite us not adding any notes or taking notes away, which is another thing that you can do. So for hi-hats, you could be taking out certain notes. You could double some notes up. Same thing with the clap or the kick. You can move them around a little bit. It's up to you. It's just what sounds best. One last thing I do want to show you is percussion loops. Now these are great if your drum loops, again, do sound a little bare. Maybe percussion isn't your thing and you're not sure where to put those. These are really great to fix what you're doing with that. So you can throw them on your drum loop and they'll kind of fill in the spaces and you can subtly bring them in with volume or put a channel EQ on them so they kind of sit in the back, but the listener will notice that they do sound more full and just like a nicer, better drum loop. Let's do this uh, 90, this perk loop here. And I don't really like to have too much going on in them because they are kind of an accent to my drum loop. And I'm just gonna hold option. And then I'm on the lower half of the audio there, not the upper half, it has that little uh, loop function. If you go to the lower half, this is the actual time stretch function. And you can click that and then bring it to the end of our loop. And now this will be, so it started at 90, now this will be at 105, um, like our project. So let's take a listen to this now. There is some percussion in there. It's a lot of hi-hats, but maybe that'll accent our hi-hats nicely. So now let's play this with the drums. I think it's a bit loud, so we'll turn it down a little bit and maybe add a slight filter on it. Now let's play this with the melody and see what it all sounds like together. One other note that you can do as well, um, which is the swing function, and that's under this time quantize feature. I don't typically use that too much. Um, I usually use the methods that I mentioned here, but swing is something you can experiment with as well to give a lot of kind of differentiation to other drum parts in your drum track. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. That's how you can take your normal boring drums that are always on the grid and actually add some variation to them bring them to life, humanize them, make your listener interested even in a very, very simple drum loop. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, make sure to hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Tony Holiday, take care.